So we'll go through an example here looking at the limited pressure cycle. Here we have an ideal dual cycle or a limited pressure cycle with a compression ratio of 14, air is coming in at 14.7 psi at 120 Fahrenheit. We're given the volume and the two heat addition processes, one's at 0.6 BTU and the constant pressure heat input is 1.1 BTU. So here we have our compression ratio of 14, our input pressure, our input temperature and Fahrenheit. We convert that to Rankine, that's 580R. The input volume is 92 cubic inches. We're given, we're given the total amount of heat at constant volume, it's 0.6 BTU, and at constant pressure, 1.1 BTU. We're asked to find the thermal efficiency of this cycle. So we use our standard assumptions. Air is the working fluid. We assume an ideal gas and constant specific heats. So we look up the value of R, the ideal CAS constant for air. It's 0 0.3704 psi cubic feet pound mass Rankine. Now here we see our units are cubic feet, but we're given our volume in cubic inches. So we need to make sure we do the conversion. Quite a few of us missed that on assignment four we did last Monday in class. So we take our ideal gas law, solve for the mass. So we have 14.7 psi multiplied by 92. Now we divide by 12 cubed. There's 12 inches in a foot. So that's now cubic feet. Here's our ideal gas constant. I'm keeping the units in here to make sure everything works out and we're not missing a, a conversion step. So we get a total mass 0 0.003881 pound mass of air. Okay, now we can start solving the cycle. So from 1 to 2 we have isentropic compression. So we use our isentropic formula. So we know T1 is 580R. You know our compression ratio is 14. K minus 1 is 0 0.04. So T2 works out to 1667 Rankine. From 2 to 3. This is constant volume heat addition. So QN1 is equal to MCV multiplied by T3 minus T2. So let's plug in the numbers we have. We know T2 is 0.6 BTU. We solved for the mass. We can look up the CV for air, 0.171 BTU per pound mass per Rankin. We don't know T3, but we know T2. So we can solve for T3, and we get that that is equal to 2571 Rankin. From 3 to 4 is a constant pressure heat addition. So we'll write out the energy balance for that. And if you recall from the previous video, because there's work done during this process, we have the enthalpy instead of internal energy. So MCP T4 minus T3. We'll plug in the values we have. We're given 0.1 or 1.1 BTU. We solved for the mass. We look up CP. We don't know T4, so we'll solve for T4. We get T4 
is equal to 3,752 Ankin. Now from 4 to 5, that's a constant entropy or isentropic expansion. So here we use our isentropic formula, T5 is equal to T4, V4 over V5, K minus 1. Now we don't know what V4 is, so we have to go back and figure out what to use for, D, for V4. So we'll go back to this constant pressure process. You know that PV over T is constant for an ideal gas. So P3 V3 over T3 is equal to P4 V4 over T4. P4 and P3 are equal, so we can cancel those two out. So now that we have V4, it's T4 over T3 V3. We know those two temperatures. So V4 is equal to 1.459 V3. So let's go back and plug this into our isentropic equation. We'll substitute in the T4 we know. So now we have 1.59 V3 over V5. But V3 is equal to V2 and V5 is equal to V1. If you're not sure about that, go back and look at the PV diagrams and you'll see that those volumes are equal. So we can now simplify this knowing our compression ratio of 14. Let's write that out again here where we have a bit more space. So T5 is equal to 3752R. Then we have 1.1 or 1.459 over 14 to the exponent 0 0.4. T5 is 1519 Rankin. So now we can calculate the total net work. It's the work done during the expansion. Subtract the work done by compression. So if I were to continue with this line of thinking I'd be making a mistake. reason there's a mistake is because I'm not including the work done during the constant pressure heat addition. So you recall the piston's moving during that time so work's done. So we can add the boundary work to this equation here. So we'd have uh, P3 multiplied by the difference in volume. Then we could calculate the net work using that method or we can do a simpler method using an en energy balance on the entire cycle. So we take the net heat going into the system over the whole cycle, subtract the net work going out of the system over the whole cycle, and that's equal to the net change of internal energy, which is zero because we're going around the whole loop from point 0.1 back to point 0.1. So the network is Qn minus Q out. We're given Qn in the two stages, so we'll add those together. And we'll subtract Q out. That plus sign there should be a minus sign. So we have point 0.6 plus 1.1 subtract the mass multiplied by the CV value multiplied by the heat addition or the heat rejection. So we have 1.08 BTU as the network. So to find the thermal efficiency we divide the network by the heat input. So we have 1.8, 1.08 divided by the sum of 1.1 and 0 0.6. So we get a thermal efficiency of 63.4%.